A chilling tale is told in the eerie seventh month's nighttime hours. Watch the living as they engage in taboo rituals in an attempt to communicate with the dead, where horror and reverence meet in the spectral beauty of the night. A mysterious dance between life and death begins, shrouded in secrets. Here are the top five ways to honor your family's history. First, make elaborate amulets with protective herbs and symbols to wear during this eerie period. A chilling ritual takes place in the shadows of the seventh month, away from prying eyes. Those who venture down this treacherous road seek solace in the creation of amulets of spectral power delving into the dark arts in order to wield protection from the encroaching spirits. As the moon rises, lighting the dark room where the dark arts are practiced, a sinister halo fills the air. The air is thick with the pungent aroma of dried herbs, a testimony to the age-old knowledge they once held. Aged and wise fingers wield ancient implements as they carve complex symbols into cold metal. Their chants of incantations reverberate, a tango with the afterlife as they seek wisdom from long-forgotten beings. These amulets are infused with the spirit world because they are made with magical herbs. The amulets take shape, each cut from the engraver's tool further cementing the talisman's connection to the restless specters. The eerie artwork etched on them is almost alive, as if it were trying to break free of its metal cage. Herbs chosen for their spectral resonance are finely powdered and combined with tiny amounts of the creator's blood. The amulet's ethereal power comes from this potent mixture, which draws on the life force of the living to forge a bond with the departed. As the night progresses, the barrier between dimensions thins, allowing the amulets to pick up on the ethereal energies. The ghosts take note, their interest piqued by the subtle harmonies that float through the night. The amulets are decorated one by one, and the seekers put the eerie final products around their necks. Their hearts begin to race as they become increasingly conscious of the sinister otherworldly presence that seems to cling to the amulets. The amulets seem to vibrate with every beat of the heart, picking up on the ethereal energy that permeates the room. There is a palpable air of menace surrounding those who don these garments, as if the veil between the living and the dead has been lifted. Wearing the amulets, the seekers establish a shaky connection to the other world. They open themselves up to the spectral forces and are transformed into conduits who bring the ghosts closer still. Wearers of the amulets bear the brunt of their power, serving as a beacon to both good and evil spirits. There is a hidden truth within these eerie talismans. Those who dare to wield the spectral power may become haunted not only by the spirits they seek to protect against, but also by the darkness within their own hearts. Although intended to protect their owners from evil forces, the amulets may now seal their fates in ways they never could have imagined. To guide the spirits back to the afterlife, people traditionally send them off by releasing floating lanterns down winding rivers. A spooky ceremony takes place by the murky riverside in the late evening of the seventh month. There is a gathering of shadows, and they are dancing in honor of the upcoming ghostly dance terror on their features, the living cling to ethereal lanterns that emit a mesmerizing glow. The lanterns, which are covered in mystical symbols, seem to be alive with an otherworldly energy, as if they were possessed by the spirits of the dead. As the spirits are summoned back to the afterlife, the air is heavy with expectation. The river seems to hold its breath as the first lantern is released and begins its upward journey. As the night winds rustle the leaves, a whisper of prayers escapes trembling lips. The lantern's light reflects eerily off the water, illuminating the twisted expressions of those who watch. As the river winds, the lanterns float downstream one by one, symbolizing a passage into the unknown. The dead, who are said to be attracted to the light in the sky, start their spectral march. Their ghostly radiance casts a chilling pall over the riverbanks and the living. The atmosphere thickens with an indescribable weight as the lanterns float downstream. The living are given a glimpse into the realm of the dead through the spirit's ethereal dance. There are lingering echoes of the dead's last words, as if they are desperately trying to say goodbye to the world they have left behind. The living can sense the chill of invisible hands caressing their cheeks with the icy wind of the night. The river's murky depths come to life, as if hiding ghostly figures that yearn to be reunited with their families. The living, caught between the two worlds, must bear witness to the temporary bridge the dead have built. It's the living communing with the ghostly forces they used to fear in an exchange of grief and comfort, dread and fascination. Even after the last lantern has gone out, the air is alive with the buzz of an unspoken bond. The living contemplate silently, their minds and souls weighed down by the spectral encounter. Their offerings and prayers are carried by the river far beyond the horizon, creating an invisible bond between dimensions. The living, in setting free the floating lanterns, take on the role of guardians of the spectral procession, leading the departed to their final resting place. Forever intertwined in the eerie beauty of the seventh month, the living and the dead dance together in a remembrance and farewell that is bittersweet.
Send nighttime whispered messages of love and gratitude to your ancestors for wisdom from beyond the grave. In the dark of the seventh month, a meaningful ceremony takes place. The living congregate at holy sites, their voices carrying through the afterlife like hushed bells. Shadows dance across ancestral altars lit by flickering candles. People who have lost loved ones often write letters to the dead in an effort to find comfort and guidance from those who have passed on. Their cries float through the air like heavenly music, a symphony of nostalgia that penetrates the veil. The barrier between worlds flutters, drawing the living closer to the dead. They sense their ancestors' ghostly presence, like they're being held in an eternally comforting embrace. In the dark, lines dissolve and memories become entangled with the phantom voices of the dead. The living talk to the dead about their triumphs and tragedies, hoping to learn from their experiences. An unseen energy ripples through the air as night falls. The living find solace in this ethereal link, certain that their affectionate communications with their departed ancestors will be received. They find not only comfort in one another, but also the burden of a common past. An intimate bond that survives even death is revealed by the ghost's palpable presence. A gentle breeze, a flickering flame, or a distant rustle may be the spirit's response to the whispers of the living that echo through the night. It's a subtle conversation that goes beyond words, a bond that exists on a higher plane than mortal life. The living experience a mysterious comfort, as though being held by spectral watchers. This connection makes it seem like the dead aren't really gone, thinning the air between the worlds. With the dawn's first rays dispelling the enchantment of the night, the living leave the holy ground, their spirits renewed. They are imbued with their ancestors' spirits, and they can rest assured that their loved ones on the other side have received their messages of love and support. It's more than just a nightly ritual to whisper to their ancestors. It's a dance of communion between the living and the dead that bridges the gap between this world and the next. The seventh month's eerie beauty serves as a permanent reminder of a love and connection that lasts beyond physical death. For here terrifying tales of the undead from the region's elderly, which have been passed down for generations but are rarely discussed. In the dark of the seventh month, beneath a wan moon, a secret meeting is held. People today look to the elderly for guidance because they are widely regarded as the keepers of time-honored secrets and terrifying tales of the supernatural. As the stories told by the elders echo through the ages, shadows dance and the air is chilled with mystery. A tapestry of the supernatural is being woven by the whispers around the crackling fire. The stories evoke ghosts that refuse to leave the mind, just as echoes from the past do. Ancestral fears are embedded in every word, as if the spirits are listening in from the other side. The memories of the elderly shine like flickering lanterns, shedding light on the stories that have been lost for generations. They discuss terrifying encounters with ghosts and other supernatural entities that occurred on nights when the veil between the worlds was thin. A mixture of curiosity and fear causes the living to lean closer. They take on the role of keepers of the shadowy tales during the seventh month of the year. Paranormal bargains made in desperation by ghosts, unexplainable hauntings, and wayward spirits all feature prominently in these tales. Every story reveals something about the human condition, our hopes, and our fascination with the unknown. The barrier between our world and the afterlife appears to weaken as night falls. When the elders tell their stories, the listeners feel as though the spirits themselves have joined them in the room. The fire roars, casting macabre shadows on the expressions of the captivated crowd. The wise men and women's voices fade to eerie whispers, bringing the audience closer to the mysterious interdimensional dance. The group breaks up as dawn breaks, but the secrets remain permanently etched in the minds of the living. The spectral essence of the old ghost stories continues to linger in the recesses of their minds, forever intertwined with the eerie allure of the seventh month. Hearing these tales from the elderly locals is more than just satisfying a morbid fascination. It's a gateway into the realm of ancient knowledge, a record of the supernatural events that shaped local traditions. A trip into the mysterious past, where the living and the dead coexist in the stories passed down through the ages in whispers. 5. Celebrate the beauty of transients by making elaborate sand mandalas to offer to the spirits as gifts. A mysterious ceremony takes place on the hidden shores in the ethereal light of the seventh month. The living, inspired by ancient knowledge, create elaborate sand mandalas, fleeting masterpieces that represent the ephemeral nature of life. They pray to the gods as they arrange the colorful grains and steady hands. Beautiful in their emergence, the patterns are ultimately doomed to be erased by the passing of time. The air seems to vibrate with an otherworldly resonance as the sand mandalas take shape, as if the spirits themselves were drawn to the art by its transient beauty. As a touching memorial to the ephemeral character of life, the living present these sand mandalas as gifts to the afterlife. All 
all things, including humanity, are destined to return to the eternal embrace depicted in the mandalas. Patterns emerge that are both intricate and beautiful, like those seen in the heavens. The mandalas function as portals through which the departed can move between dimensions. The delicate dance of life is represented by the sand mandalas that disappear with the rising tide. As the waves take back their fleeting gifts, the living watch with solemn reverence as transience carries its beauty into the ethereal abyss. The ghosts appear happy as they dance, their afterlife acknowledged and celebrated. They welcome the fleeting gifts, bringing their ethereal existence closer to the tangible through the creative channel. The living take comfort in the fact that the beauty of impermanence is not limited to this world. As such, it is a tango between the ephemeral and the eternal, a remembrance that everything, material and ethereal alike, is a part of the greater music of the cosmos. When the tide goes out, the sand mandalas disappear along with all the intricate detail they provided. The ceremony leaves an indelible mark on the hearts of the living, connecting them forever to the ethereal energies that float through the seventh month. More than just an artistic exercise, making sand mandalas is a way to honor the fleeting beauty that characterizes life's mysterious dance. It's a way to honor the dead with fleeting tokens, cementing a bond between the living and the dead that will live on in the eerie allure of the seventh month.